Good afternoon and welcome to SCED Live. I am your host Marissa Rolls and here's what's making news now. The Ontario government has announced it will sell 60% of Hydro One and it will allow beer to be sold in some grocery stores. More money will be taken from Crown assets like the Liquor Control Board of Ontario and Hydro One. Originally, the government had promised to put the proceeds into improving public transit. More details will be released when Kathleen Wynne's Liberal government brings down the provincial budget April 23rd. CBC failed to provide its staff a workplace free from disrespectful and abusive behavior, says an independent report into the CBC's handling of the behavior of former radio and television host Gian Gomeshi. The report by Toronto employment lawyer Janice Rubin says Gomeshi's behavior violated CBC standards and that his behavior was considered to create an intimidating, humiliating, hostile or offensive work environment. Gomeshi, the former host of CBC Radio's Arts and Culture, Show Q, was fired on October 26 last year after executives saw what they described as graphic evidence that he had physically hurt a woman. CBC also announced yesterday that two senior managers, radio executive Chris Boyce and human resources executive Todd Spencer, have left the corporation. Gomeshi faces eight charges, which include seven counts of sexual assault and one of overcoming resistance by choking. Gomeshi's lawyers has said he intends to plead not guilty to the charges. Gomeshi is free on a $100,000 bail with numerous conditions. He returns to court on April 28th. The Gardner Expressway needs a $458 million investment to help commuters save several minutes. A citywide study released yesterday afternoon proposes two ideas for future changes. The first idea is the most economical, removing the elevated 1.7 kilometer portion east of Jarvis and replacing it with an eight lane boulevard. The second option is to maintain the Gardner being less disruptive to travel times, but it is more expensive in the long run. If you're in Toronto this weekend, be prepared to alternate your route to accommodate major road closures. The expressway will be closed from Friday to Monday to move the Eglinton Crosstown LRT. Starting 9 p.m. on Friday, the Allen is closed between Eglinton and Lawrence Avenue for maintenance. At 11 p.m., a road closure will begin on Allen between Eglinton to Shepherd, but all will be reopened early Monday morning. This is the first of three consecutive weekends that will have major road closures. Now, here's Coco Zhang with today's weather update. Thank you, Marissa. I'm Coco Zhang, and here's your weather forecast for the rest of the week. Right now, it's 11 degrees outside with, the beautiful, with beautiful sunlight. Today, we expect a high of 19 degrees and a low of 8. It will be cloudy this afternoon, so you can put away your glasses, sunglasses. As we're wrapping up for the winter semester this week and next week, uh, warm weather seems to cheer everyone up a bit from the heavy work. So now let's take a look at what Humber students and faculty have to say about their upcoming weekend. Today's weather is beautiful. It's sunny, there's a light breeze, and the temperature is just perfect. Spring's here, indeed I'm ready, and I'm looking forward to the summer. Our plans are to drive up north to the cottage tonight, Thursday evening, and remain there for the weekend to do some gardening and cleaning up. It's such a nice break from all of February's craziness, and I mean, sure, there's a little cold wind going on, but like, it feels <laughs> great, like, and the sun is out, it's just wonderful, I love it. I'm going to try and be outside, but I know that I have to work, so if I can get outside as much as possible, it'd be great. I love it. The sun's out, and it's warming up, so it's fantastic. Certainly in the future, I um, have got my golf clubs out, so I'm planning to play some golf, but uh, this weekend, I'm afraid, is going to be uh, completing the semester. We've had such a long winter, I'm, I'm dying to get some warm weather. Now let's take a look at the weather in the next few days. Tomorrow it will be cloudy and there's a 60% chance of getting shower or drizzle in the morning. And the temperature will be 19 to 4. We're going to have a really sunny weekend this week. On Saturday it's going to be sunny all day with a high of 15 and a low of 4. And on Sunday it's going to be sunny again and it will be 13 to 3. So with a really delightful weekend, let's welcome next week with your umbrellas and rim boots. So on Monday, it's going to be rainy with a high of 16 to low of, to low of 8. And on Tuesday, it's rainy again. It's going to be 10 to 7. 
So that's all for weather today. I'm Coco Jean, back to the studio. Thanks, Coco. Now, a 15-year-old girl who was severely beaten on April 1st in downtown Winnipeg has been taken off life support. A 15-year-old boy was charged with aggravated assault and aggravated sexual assault the same day the girl was found. According to police, the boy and girl were in care of the province's child and family services system and were being housed at the same hotel, not far from where the girl was found after the attack. They had been walking around together downtown when they started to argue, police said at the time of the boys' arrest. Toronto had a special guest at the Rico Coliseum last night. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper was joined by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Modi's visit is in, in an effort to improve Canadian relations and global industries. Modi's visit also in, involved signing a deal to buy 3,000 tons of Saskatchewan's uranium over the next five years. Toronto was Modi's first stop in Canada. He continues his three-day Canadian tour out west next in Vancouver. Magna International Incorporated is one of the largest automobile parts manufacturer and largest companies in North America. Based out of Aurora, Ontario, the plant has sold its interior business to the Spanish company Group Antolin. Magna International is keeping its seating unit, but hopes the sale will improve ties between the two companies. The interior business was sold for $545 million. And now, Emily Singh with your sports news update. Here's your sports update for today. The hunt for the Stanley Cup began last night with four games opening with big hits, goals, and even an ejection. The drama hit as soon as the puck dropped. Let's recap the action with Tim Paul. Thanks, Emily. It certainly was a wild night. The intensity peaked when Habs star P.K. Subban was ejected in the second period for a slash on Senators rookie Mark Stone. Stone left the ice but later returned to the game, appearing to be fine. Subban was caught on camera furious when told that Stone was back on the ice. Even though Stone seemed fine, it was revealed today that he had a micro fracture in his right wrist. The league reviewed the slash and Subban will not be suspended. Despite the antics, the Hab pulled out a 4-3 win and a wild contest that saw six goals combined in the second period. And in New York, the Islanders stole home ice advantage from the Washington Capitals, silencing their superstar Alexander Ovechkin. Ovechkin was held scoreless with only eight shots on goal. New York's Brock Nelson started and finished the scoring. He scored six minutes in, then notched an empty netter to put the game away. And in Nashville, the Predators gave their home crowd something to jump about as they jumped out to a 3-0 lead against the Chicago Blackhawks in the first period. Looking to shift the momentum, the Hawks changed their goalie to start the second. That's when things got interesting. Behind rookie goalie Scott Darling, the Hawks sent the game into overtime tied 3-3. Intense body checking and multiple scoring chances still left the dust unsettled, and Duncan Keith finally scored the game winner on a nice slap shot just inside the blue line to complete the 4-3 comeback. And an old flame was renewed in the rivalry between the Canucks and the Calgary Flames. These teams have met three times in the past, and each time they have, the series has gone seven games. If the first game is any indication, this will be a memorable series as well. This young Flames team is known to be a third period team all year, and they proved it as Vancouver took a 1-0 lead into the third, only to have Calgary come back, scoring two goals, including the game winner with 29 seconds left. A great start to your NHL hockey playoffs. Now, back to you, Emily, with the rest of sports. Thanks, Tim. The crowds went wild yesterday at the Rogers Centre as the Toronto Blue Jays had their first win at home. The Jays beat the Tampa Bay Rays 12-7, with Kevin Piller of the Jays making a jaw-dropping catch. Piller climbed the outfield wall and made the catch of his career. The Toronto Raptors won 92-87 over the Charlotte Bobcats in their last game of the season, led by Kyle Lowry's 26 points, who will be taking them into the playoffs. Paul Pierce of the Washington Wizards, the Raps' first-round playoff opponent, said the team didn't have the it factor. We'll see if the Raptors bite back. Tip-off is this Saturday at 12.30 p.m. at the Air Canada Centre. Ex-NFL tight end Aaron Hernandez has been found guilty of first-degree murder and has been sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. The former New England's Patriot was found guilty of all five gun-related charges in the 2013 killing of Odin Lloyd. Lloyd was dating the sister of Hernandez's fiance. Hernandez was a budding star with one of the best franchises in the NFL, the New England Patriots, until he was released once the charges came out. And finally, talk about going for a spin, British snowboarder Billy Morgan has performed the first ever quadruple cork spin in Italy. Take a look at this amazing jump. 
Morgan smashed the previous record held by Yuki Kadano with four off-access flips and five full rotations. This isn't the first record for the 26-year-old. In 2011, Morgan wow. also landed the first ever triple backside rodeo. That's it for your sports update. I'm Emily Singh. Now back to the studio. Thank you, Emily. A rare decision made by the U.S. President Barack Obama will allow the Congress to have a say in the proposed nuclear deal with Iran. In a unanimous agreement, a bill will be passed allowing the full Senate to vote on the final deal being made by June 30th. Yemen's President Abd Rabu has appointed Vice President Khaled Baha as a deputy to widen support for his government. The Houthis rebel group has seized the capital and is advancing towards control of the south. The advancement could result with the start of a land war in Yemen. Baha hopes to prevent the attack and strengthen the solidarity within the country. China is making an effort to improve its relations with Pakistan. The two countries are involved in a $46 billion business agreement. China is a key financial and military ally for Pakistan. The business deal is to improve transit between the two countries and to assist in the future energy projects. China also looks to sell eight submarines to their global ally Pakistan. The Chinese President Xi Jinping will visit Pakistan next week. A scary moment at the White House, an unknown drone landing at the South Grounds caused the south area of the building to go into lockdown on Monday. The man operating the drone is now going to self-report his involvement in the incident. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency confirmed that the man works for them and was off duty at the time of the incident. They said the drone flight was not work related. The man was interviewed by Secret Service agents and was fully cooperative. An unmanned SpaceX rocket blasted off from Florida on Tuesday. The rocket was on mission to send a cargo ship to the International Space Station. It flipped around and made a hard landing on a platform in the ocean. The rocket exploded into a fireball about 200 miles off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. Earlier this year, in January, the rocket ran out of fluid for its steering fins in a landing attempt. It crashed into the platform while landing. A second attempt in February was called off because of high seas. However, the rocket ran through its pre-programmed landing sequence successfully and hovered vertically above the waves before splashing down and breaking apart. SpaceX is one of two companies working for NASA to fly cargo to the station after ret the retirement of the space shuttle. Recently, SpaceX is working on a passenger version of the Dragon capsule and it has dozens of contracts to deliver commercial communication satellites into orbit. Finally, primary students in Guizhou of southwest China were shocked as a buffalo ran into their playground. Students were just about to leave when a buffalo frightened by car horns broke a gate and rushed through the school. Administrators were able to restrain the animal to a storage room. Police were notified and with the buffalo owner's permission, they put down the animal for public safety. This has been Skedline for Thursday, April 16th. For all of your coverage, go to Skedline.com. I'm Marissa Rolls. Thank you for watching.